What's up guys, Axis here, back with part 2 of the slug intro tutorial. Today we're going to be showing you how to do the lighting. Um, I'm going to be using Cinema 4D instead of Octane, which I did in the original. But we should be able to get um, quite close to the result. And I'm not sure if I'm doing a part 3 for After Effects yet, if you guys are uh, interested in that. Remember to post that in the comments. Anyway, um, if you haven't checked out the first part, I'd recommend you do so in the... Uh, do so do so in the top right hand corner and um, there's a card annotation to that uh, and you'll also be able to see the example up there as well um, in that we just show you how to fly through a landscape like this using splines uh, and aligned splines and a target um, so yeah uh, that's basically all we did in the last part um, and this part we're going to be showing you how to kind of animate and move about this mesh using a formula and also I'm going to be showing you how to do lighting. So without any further ado, let's just jump into this. First off, I'm going to create a sky, um, which you can do by going up here and then going to sky. And then we're going to create the material for the sky. We're not going to be using any uh, HRIs for this. We're just going to be using a gradient. And to do this, we're going to uncheck color and reflectance. The only channel we're going to be needing in the majority or all of these materials is luminance. So we check luminance, now we can go into gradient and we're going to make this on V which is going to make it uh, going up the Y and now we're just going to use uh, kind of some Miami sort of colors so if we go for some cyans, purples, uh, dark blues uh, and pinks uh, those sort of colors will work well with this intro or this style at least So something like that, and then we're going to go for a deep cyan here, something like this, and then we're going to go to a purple. Uh, this color picker may look different on uh, R16 and below, but uh, R17 has done something weird with the colors. Um, and now we're just going to go to a black, and get rid of this. Um, but that's that's basically what I want to do for the sky. Now if we just drag this onto the sky, you can see we've got this really nice colourful background now. I'm going to change the renderer to physical and I'm going to change this to medium. Obviously if your computer is struggling, put it back to low. But medium should work fine. Now if I just do a quick render preview, I'm going to calculate. If I turned off uh, subdivisions, uh, then it should run faster. As you can see, it's almost instant there. But it's pretty boring at the moment, nothing much going on. So now we're going to create the material that we're going to use uh, quite a lot actually um, for this landscape and also for some extra stuff we're going to be adding in. So luminance again, but this time we're going to go for uh, Frenzel. Uh, and here we are going to uh, start off the same, so we're going to go with a light cyan. Then we're going to go into a deep cyan, basically the same as a gradient, and then a, a deep a deep purple, so some like almost blue, something like that, and then we're going to go directly into the black. Um, I actually want to make this slightly more white, and then I might also spread out this a bit more. Um, did I do this right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did this right. Anyway, I want to kind of make it look like everything comes in at the start. So maybe drag this over here a bit. And that should be fine, I think. And then we can drag this onto our landscape, and as uh, immediately you can see some crazy stuff going on here. Shall we run this out? It's looking very, very weird. Uh, I'm actually going to spread these out a bit because I don't like how immediate everything is and how harsh all the lighting is. So we do that again. It's looking a lot a lot softer and I like that looks good um, and now I'm gonna add some extra stuff in here I'm gonna add a sphere 
and then I'm going to clone this hold alt while you click cloner to put it into a as a child of the cloner and I'm going to go to object uh, and then we're going to align this to the spline here and we can turn up the count to whatever we desire um, and now I'm going to add a random effector make sure you have cloner selected if you didn't go to effectors and drag this in uh, and then I'm going to change the scale to minus one um, make sure you also check uh, uniform scale so you don't have to change every single uh, parameter um, let's make sure we don't fly through any of these nope there's one maybe just make all these a bit smaller there we go flying past that one there that's looking pretty good um, I might up the count as well just to make these a bit more prominent like so and then I'm just going to drag the same material on this and as you can see it's uh, using the frenzel to kind of uh, shade the outside parts So there we go, uh, and now we're going to add some little moon elements, which will go in the background, which will kind of, I think I'm going to use some pinks on these. And then basically, I'm going to add a bunch, a bunch of these. Basically how I'm uh, duplicating these is when you hold control and drag, you'll create a duplicate. And then for these, I'm going to add a new material, luminance again. This time I'm just going to use a solid cyan. And then we're going to create another material, which we're going to put onto this moon here. Luminance only again. And we're going to create a gradient. Again on the uh, Y. And I'm going to use some pinks and purples in this. Just to break up the colours. And now a purple. So there we go. I'm... As you can see, it's updating live, so you can make sure that the uh, the pink's actually showing in this. So there we go. I might want to add some more because obviously we're gonna go past this. So maybe. Go out of there, duplicate this, a bring this over here, make it bigger, maybe put this on here, and then create a few smaller spheres around it. Like so. And then I'm going to um, uh, I'll put this shader on these ones. Should look nice, hopefully. <laughs> um, that's way too big. Doesn't matter how many polygons you have on these either, because Render Perfect will deal with uh, making these look decent. I'm going to just duplicate one over here as well, just to fill up the scene a bit more. Maybe put a, a complete sign on that. Uh, actually, that, that may, may be too much. Let's go with that gradient. You can create a bunch of different ones as well. You don't have to stick to these kind of limited couple. Uh, 
and then maybe um, Inferno will be fine as enough. And then if I just check on subdivisions, we should get a nice rocky finish. Just calculating. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the uh, the lighting. Obviously, it's a bit slower moving through all of this. But now, um, we're going to add some uh, formula. Now, the problem with this is it severely slows down everything that's happening. So I'm going to create a new, uh, a new project. So just do Control N, and I'm going to create a plane. And then in here, we're going to put some formula. Hold shift when you click on that, and it will uh, put it inside. Uh, and then I'm going to make this a sphere fall off, spherical fall off. And if we click play, nothing is happening. So I'm going to turn up the subdivisions. Nothing is still happening. Two seconds. That's it's the height, the y height, because I put it as a child, the y height was set to the same height. But basically, this is kind of the thing you want to do. Uh, if you want to kind of minimize the effect, you can go uh, divide it by a certain number. So obviously, uh, the uh, forward slash is treated as a, a division sign. So we're going to add a bunch of these around our uh, landscape. Remember to save. <laughs> So we'll add a bunch of these, uh, change sizes and stuff, and then we'll put them inside of the uh, the mesh. Obviously, I'd, I'd recommend switching all of these off until you render them. Just because your computer will probably die if you don't. Where does the camera even start? Oh yeah, it's over there. So just add some around it, some even in its path. What you have to watch out for is if you're putting them in its path, um, that your camera doesn't fly into a piece of piece of mesh because obviously it's going to be displacing this. And maybe we could change a couple numbers. Just completely randomize this. You don't want it to look linear uh, and kind of boring for whatever you're doing because this is kind of a crazy intro or style to mess with. So if we just drag this inside, go into our active camera, we're going to get a lot of lag as you can see, frame by frame it's taking ages. But you can scan through this just by waiting a couple seconds, just to make sure you're not flying into any mesh. And these, this does actually render really quickly, so uh, you shouldn't have many issues with uh, re-rendering if you do have an, uh, any stray mesh bits. Okay, I don't think we're flying into any. If these are getting a bit too distracting, what you can do is you can click on this and drag, click again and drag, and this will make the uh, them not visible in the uh, viewer. But obviously the effect will still be shown in the viewer, so make sure if you want that to go away, that you uncheck all of these, recheck them if you want them. Um, so yeah, that's the basis of uh, the entire uh, project there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do some also simple render settings. So I'm going to do 1280 by 720. I like to do 300 DPI and I like to stick to 30 FPS. And we're going to be going for 8 seconds, which is 240 FPS. Uh, 240, 240 frames. Um, and saving, I, I would think I'm going to use PNG and 16-bit. TIFF uh, is completely uncompressed. And if you... Uh, use it, your hard drive space will plummet. So, I mean, uh, use it if you really want that uncompressed format. Uh, and if you want camera data, obviously check this on. 
and then we can just save this. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much everything for lighting and the entire Cinema 4D part. So again, if you guys want to uh, see a next part of this for After Effects, then obviously comment, leave a like, because um, I'm not sure if you guys actually want that. Um, it may include, well, probably will include all like a lot of third-party plugins. So um, just just to be warned for that, um, because I'm not very used to using standard color correction as first party in, in After Effects, etc. But if you guys actually want to see that, then uh, make sure you leave a comment and I'll make sure I do that. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.